The Philippines Department of National Defense DND, has begun a tender for the acquisition of the Armored Vehicle Launch Bridge AVLB, of the Philippine Army PA. This is part of a larger combat engineering equipment project that will provide PA support equipment for the use of combat techniques. If sent, this will be the first time PA will have these assets. PA only has standard construction and road construction equipment as part of the engineering unit. It was determined that the platform vehicle would be based on a track tank chassis, and the bridge itself would have a range of 18 meters and load capacity based on the NATO STANAG military load classification MLC-50. According to the Philippine defense page Max Defense Philippines, this acquisition was part of lessons learned by the Armed Forces of the Philippines AFP, during its military operations. The PA is aware of the importance of engineering combat to support military operations, especially when the bridge is under enemy control or with an enemy fire. Max Defense Philippines also demonstrated that the acquisition of tank-based AVLB could be a sign of PA preparations to acquire a main battle tank in the near future. If all goes well, sending tenders by interested supporters will open on November 13, 2019, with deliveries expected to begin within one year after the notification to continue NTP, is released. Bridges launched by armored vehicles AVLB, are combat support vehicles, sometimes considered a military engineering subtype. Designed to assist the military in deploying tanks quickly and other armored combat vehicles across gap-type obstacles, such as, and especially, river. AVLBs are usually tracked vehicles converted from tank chassis to carry folding metal bridges, not weapons. The duty of the AVLB is to allow armored or infantry units to cross the crater. Anti-tank trenches, destroyed bridges, railroad tracks, canals, rivers and ravines, when a river too deep for vehicles to reach is reached, and no bridges are located or sturdy enough. An important concern when moving a 60-ton tank. The bridge layer opens and launches its load, providing a bridge that is ready to use across obstacles in just a few minutes. After the range has been installed, the AVLB vehicle detaches from the bridge and moves sideways to allow traffic to pass. After all vehicles have crossed, it crosses the bridge itself and attaches it back to the bridge on the other side. Then draw the range ready to move again. Similar procedures can be used to allow crossing of small gaps or similar barriers. AVLB can carry bridges of 60 feet 19 meters, or more. By using a tank chassis, the bridge layer can cover the same terrain as the main battle tank, and the provision of armor allows them to operate even in the face of enemy fire. However, this is not a universal attribute. Some very sturdy 6x6 or 8x8 truck chassis have been lent to bridge layer applications. 
Modern AVLB routes can be found in World War I, at the beginning of the tank war. After developing the tanks, Britain and France were faced with the problem of installing tanks in the face of the trenches which dominated the battlefield. Early engagements, such as at Cambrai demonstrated the use of tanks, but also highlighted their vulnerability to battlefield geography. Many early tanks found themselves trapped in trenches because they had a path that was not long enough to cross as on the right. To overcome this deficiency, tanks, especially the common British tanks began to fight wickedly hanging over their bows, sometimes as simple as a bunch of heavy twigs. By dropping this into a ditch, they can make slices that can be driven by tanks. Later, several tanks began to carry rails on their decks, the first AVLB. In 1919, the British Army, at its training center in Christchurch, had a Mark V tank with a lifting device capable of carrying and placing bridges or carrying out clearance and demolition of mines. It was in the era of World War II that the importance of layers of armored bridges, as well as combat engineering vehicles and armored recovery vehicles, became entirely clear. With the advent of the Blitzkrieg War, all divisions had to advance together with tanks, which suddenly surpassed the speed of infantry troops. Besides leading to the emergence of self-propelled artillery, assault weapons, anti-aircraft mobile and armored personnel, car carriers, it became clear that functions such as vehicle repair, mine clearance, and the like must be carried out by advanced armored vehicles along with tanks. In addition, these forces must be able to cross all terrain forms without losing speed and without having to focus their impetus on a particular bridge and increasing the weight of armored vehicles means fewer bridges can support this mass crossing. The only feasible solution to the dilemma posed by the mobility of the all-mechanical armed forces is a special platform that can improvise river crossings and obstacles quickly and in inconvenient locations. Tracked and armored, it is able to operate right next to the combat unit, crossing rough terrain and moving forward in the face of light fire. To maximize the generality and ease treatment complications, they are usually based on existing tank chassis. One example that produced the earliest series was Brückenlieger IV, German AVLB based on Panzer IV, which entered service with the Wehrmacht in 1940. 20 were built, but excessive weight problems limited the effectiveness of the vehicle, and finally all 20 were converted back to tank. A new scissor bridge design was issued by the British in response to the war, enough to support a payload of 24 tons over 9.1 meters. It was developed for the Covenanter tank. Eventually, it developed to a capacity of 30 tons and was therefore carried by Valentine's tank without a tower. It is used in Italy, Northwestern Europe and Burma. The Allies developed similar equipment, mostly based on Churchill's ubiquitous infantry tanks carrying small girder boxes, and Sherman medium tanks from British and US forces, respectively. In some initial designs, the bridge layer can replace the bridge but not pull it. Other vehicles are an integral part of the bridge itself, such as Arc Churchill, crossing into the middle of a river or driving against obstacles and extending simple ramps in both directions, the following vehicle will drive directly above the bridge layer. Most modern bridge layers are based on the current main battle tank chassis. An example of a modern main battle tank chassis, MBT, that is being converted into a bridge layer is the manufacture of the M104 Wolverine armored bridge layer. Based on the modified M1A27 MBT chassis, Wolverine replaced the MBT tower with a bridge mounted on the chassis. The bridge over Wolverine M104 is 26 meters long and only takes 4 minutes to cross obstacles safely. This bridge was built to be able to withstand countless vehicle crossings weighing M1A2 Abrams, which weigh about 70 tons. Another approach to bridging laying on water is the use of amphibious vehicles that act as a combination of pontoons and roads. These enter the water and join together to form a bridge. 
An example is the German amphibious M3 rig, the connecting vehicle used by Germany, Britain, Singapore and Taiwan.